here hopes at answering the following questions. What are the ethical issues, specific ethical breaches, to whom the duty of care is owed in every case? We'll give a detailed course of action, recommendations before we take questions. A business is only as good as the ethics of the people in it. And ethics is a code of moral standards that govern behavior. In this analysis, we were guided by CFA code of ethics and the standards of professional conduct to come up with our conclusions. In this analysis, we used, uh, we used uh, that analogy, the candle analogy, where we represented every standard laid out by CFA by a candle. By the end of this presentation, as we are going to show you, the violation of each standard is different from the rest, where other standards are violated than others. Let's get down to it. Here is the first case. John Mwanga is unprofessional. This one I can confidently say because he has violated the whole standard of professionalism. To begin with, uh, John Mwanga, um, he violates the first standard uh, of professionalism, which is knowledge of the law. The standard requires that analysts must understand and comply with all the rules and regulations set up, including the code uh, and the standards of ethics. Therefore, by breaking standard B, which is independence and objectivity, he already violated part A, which is knowledge of the law. Under, knowledge, uh, under independence and objectivity, it requires that analysts must protect, use reasonable basis to protect um, their independence and objectivity and keep it from compromise. Yonumanga's special acceptance of the special treatment by Wilker Transport Company at the cost, we realize that it, it ends up making him to issue a recommendation that's biased, and this clearly violates the standard. Then part C, which is misrepresentation, says that analysts must not knowingly uh, mislead their clients by misstating their recommendation. Yonumanga clearly knows that he has a biased opinion, but still goes ahead to issue a recommendation that's biased, misleading the clients who lose 25% of their investment. Then we have misconduct. This standard requires that analysts must not engage in any behavior or matter that can easily put their integrity into question or make their, them uh, appear dishonest. Yonumanga's behavior portrays dishonesty. Then we have conflict of interest. Conflict of interest uh, says that analysts must disclose in clear terms to their clients or their employer anything that's likely to impair their independence and objectivity. Now, you understand that uh, we see in the case, uh, Ms. Kathleen alludes to the same by saying, well, it was more than just a business trip for the analyst. John Mwanga responds by saying, uh, not necessarily, meaning he was not ready to disclose the fact that his independence and objectivity had been impaired. This is a violation of the standard. Then we have uh, in a standard five, which is investment analysis, recommendations, and actions. Part A, which is diligence and reasonable basis. Analysts must exercise thoroughness and competence. We don't see this competence and thoroughness in John Mwanga when he's issuing the recommendation that's biased. Then we have repetition of our CFA standard seven, part A. Analysts must not engage in any behavior that's put the reputation of a CFA at stake. This one is a clear violation because you don't see these attributes that are seen in John Mwanga. Our recommendation is that Ms. Kathleen should have relocated the case from Nuru Aden, uh, from John Mwanga to Nuru Aden, was an unbiased opinion. And then the company should come up with clear policies to protect the analysts when they go on such business trips. And then our duty of care, ladies and gentlemen, is owed to the ultimate beneficiaries who are the clients who lose 25% of their investment. Thank you. We are then introduced to Ms. Nuru Aden. She's another analyst at Flex Limited. Ms. Nuru Aden has come across information regarding Fahali Limited, and this information could potentially affect the firm's share value. This information is one, material, two, non-public, three, reliable. The source could not get any more reliable. It comes from the CFO of Fahali Limited, Ms. Masi Kala. Should they change their recommendation from buy to sell? No, because by doing so, they'll be violating standard two, in particular part A, the use of material public information. The standard is clear that members and candidates who possess material non-public information that could affect the value of an investment must not act or cause others to act on that information. Number two, there's a clear conflict of interest. Flex Limited portfolio has been struggling and they will want to impress their clients. Should they use information to do that or should they, use the, should they comply with the, with the law and the code of ethics? They should comply with the law because ultimately it's their client who are going to lose. 
the, the reputation of a CFA is also at risk. Should they uh, issue a recommendation based on insider information, that will be a violation. The duty of care in this case is owed to the ultimate beneficiaries of Flex Limited and to the entire investing public. What are our recommendations? The first one will be Flex Limited should encourage Fahali Limited to make that information public. Number two, they should place Fahali Limited stock on a restricted list to prevent trading for their own personal account and, and also for their employees. They should observe the trading patterns of their employees. Number three, they should document all the communications regarding this issue just in case their, their, their actions come under scrutiny. Thank you. Keep this tight lip for now. That is John Mwanga asking Nuru Aden not to disclose his uh, misconduct after taking up a job with his employer's competitor while using confidential information from his employer. It's quite clear that the following standards have been violated. First, under professionalism, we have knowledge of the law and misconduct. The standard is quite clear. Under knowledge of the law, members and candidates must understand and comply with the given rules, laws, and regulations. And this includes the CFA Code of Ethics and the standards of professional conduct. Under misconduct, actions of covered persons must not put their uh, <coughs> professional competence into question from uh, uh, eyes of the public. Secondly, under duties to employers, we have uh, uh, additional compensation arrangements. The standard is clear that if there's other additional compensation arrangements amongst em employees, this should be brought up to speed with the employer so that they can get a written consent on the same or moral advice. Under the same, we still have a conflict of interest is also brought into question by John Mwanga not disclosing the possible conflict of interest through the new job offer. Also, putting his own individual interests before the interests of the employer violates the same. Nuru Aiden fails to disclose this misconduct to the superiors. That's a violation. And lastly, we have the responsibility as a CFA member and a CFA candidate, which requires that if you are a participant in any CFA candidate, uh, uh, sorry, uh, program, your actions must not put the reputation or the integrity of the CFA Institute at large in question or that of its programs. So John Smith's action violates those standards. The duty of care in this case was owed to Flex, which is the employer, and as part of our recommendations, Nuru Aden should consider taking up a CFA program so that she can enhance her knowledge of what is required in this profession. Because in the case it's not stated whether she, she is a participant in any program. So we propose that she should consider taking up the same. For John Mwanga, he should have brought up to speed his employer about the new job offer and he should resign. Caitlin had a recent meeting with the board of trustees of the Teachers Endowment Fund a newly acquired client bringing on board 8 billion assets under management and will be contributing more than 40% fees to Flex Investment Limited. The client has very specific needs. And wow, the fulfillment of these needs will be a violation of the following standards. Professionalism, fair dealing specifically when it comes to duties to clients, conflict of interest, and the conduct of the CFA member or candidate. Ladies and gentlemen, you might ask yourselves, what are these specific needs? Requirement number one, to be updated fast on the latest market development and to be updated on a daily basis about the performance of their portfolio. Two, to be given priority over other clients when it comes to investment recommendations. Three, regular training sessions at the expense of Flex Investment Limited. Ladies and gentlemen, in fulfillment of requirement number one and requirement number two, it will be a violation of standard 3B, the standard of fair dealing when it comes to duties to clients. The standard clearly stipulates when there is any material change in prior investment recommendations, the change should be communicated to all clients at the same time. And members and candidates are encouraged to act fairly and objectively with all clients when it comes to investment recommendations, investment analysis, and investment actions. The last requirement, regular training sessions. 
Actually, in the CFS standards of practice handbook, we are given guidance that when a client comes on board with large assets under management, the firm can go ahead and offer differentiated levels of services. As long as the offering of these services is based on suitability basis and not favoritism in any way. Our recommendation, Flex should offer firm policies, should develop firm policies that govern their dealings with their clients. Thank you. the peer-to-peer -peer conversation. Kindly expound on how an additional compensation arrangement has been violated. Thank you very much. John Mwanga is an analyst in Flex. However, he takes up a job with Orinex Company, which is a major competitor to Flex uh, investment, uh, to, to Flex investment company. From the conversation with Nuru Eden, his fellow uh, analyst, they talk about learning a new gig, all right? Learning a new gig, that means he has a new job offer that is coming in three months' time, okay? Then, he still wants to retain this position as an analyst with Flex Limited. That means, uh, still from the conversation, he goes on and says that I need to keep this job because I need to pay some bills. Accepting this new job offer, maybe for, for higher consideration of pay, violates the same standard. I hope it's clear. Thank you. Um, for, for case one, did, I don't know whether I heard wrongly, did we? Did anyone present anything on misrepresentation as one of the... Okay, please just expound on that. Um, uh, good morning once more. Uh, misrepresentation, uh, it states as, an, as uh, a standard that you are, not, you are not knowingly supposed to mislead your clients by issuing a recommendation that is misstated. So we see John Mwanga clearly misleads the clients by issuing a recommendation that he knows that it, he has a biased opinion of the same. Thank you. Um, on case four, the client is requesting for performance of their portfolio on a daily basis uh, and also for regular training sessions. If that's disclosed in the RFP tender type documentation um, and you pitch as a fund management company on the basis of that disclosure, is it acceptable for the fund management company to make particular arrangements for those two factors, requests? Thank you for your question, Judge Jonathan. In requirement number one, to be updated on a daily basis about the performance of their portfolio. In this case, the firm should come up with policies that govern how often clients with large assets under management should be updated about the performance of their portfolios. In the regular training sessions, even if the firm goes ahead and offers these services, it has a duty to its other clients to disclose this and should ensure that it's not giving this treatment to the teachers in the fund at the expense of other clients. Thank you. Maybe you can add something on what my colleague has said. Updating clients on a daily basis is not wrong because CFA is not against that. What is wrong is updating a section of your clients before the other clients. You have a duty to, for, to all the clients that you're serving. So choosing a select few so that you can give them differentiated services at the expense of the others, that is what is unethical in this case. Uh, maybe I can add on the same, uh, that standard three, uh, duties to clients, part B, which is fair dealing. So that in all that you do, ensure that you don't create a situation whereby other clients are losing uh, at the expense of another because of the special treatment that you are giving to the other client. Thank you. Um, I have two questions. 
my first question is with regards to John, uh, when you speak about the conflict of interest. Maybe during the retreat, John was actually convinced that uh, this is a good company, yeah? Because uh, the management tend to sell to you all the big, nice plans that they have. So in regards to conflict of interest, how are you able to speak with certainty that he was conflicted? And my other question is to do with the third case on Nuru. Nuru is uh, neither a CFA student nor a member. Uh, does that therefore mean that she's broken any of the regulations given that she's not governed by either? Um, I'll start with the first one, and then I'll give an opportunity for more additions on the same. So we see that uh, John Mwanga goes ahead and um, engages in a conversation with uh, Nuru Aden. Clearly, from the beginning, the way they start, because uh, we see uh, saying, oh, I have a new information for you. I've gotten a, a, a job offer from Ornex Capital. Uh, what's the response of Nuru Aden? Wow, congratulations, our competitor. Now, you understand that this is a conversation between two peers in the firm. Uh, from the, the way uh, John Wanga puts it, it looks like, first of all, his interests came first. There was a, confl a clear conflict of interest because he was ready to let go of the first, uh, the, first job of the, the first job that he was having at the time for the next job offer that he was receiving. Now, you understand that a conflict of interest requires that analysts must not in any way um, put their priorities first. You realize that priority of transactions under conflict of interest requires that you are your, uh, your interest comes last after the clans number one and the employer. Now his comes first before the other ones. Are we talking about case one or case three? No, case three or case one. Now under case one, you realize that John Mwanga, uh, John Mwanga's, uh, when he goes to Wilka Transport Company, at the cost, um, his issue is given a special treatment that already violates, uh, by accepting that special treatment, first of all, is independence of objectivity standard one, which is the most affected. Now, conflict of interest comes in now at the disclosure, because now conflict of interest, uh, but it says that it, there are two presumptions, that first of all, analysts must disclose in clear terms to their employers or their clients if there's any matter likely to impair the independence of objectivity. Now, that brings in the independence and objectivity whereby there's no you can separate independence and objectivity from conflict of interest because at the heart of the profession. Therefore, the standard part which is the most affected independence of objectivity, however, is alluded to conflict of interest by failure to disclose. Because when Ms. Kathleen say, alludes to them by saying, wow, it was more than just a business trip for the analyst, what's John's response? Not necessarily. Ming was not willing to disclose. Now, that's where conflict of interest comes in into this uh, case study. Okay. Um, and I'd like one of your team members to, you know, to help you out on this. When someone has um, a new job offering, because the impression I got is you seem to suggest that it's probably you know, betrayal and it's not good for them to think about a new job offering. What really should be the guidance here? Is it bad to look for a job when you already have one? What is the principle? Um, it's not bad. It's not wrong looking for a job when you have one. Maybe you're unhappy at your current job. The mistake John did was to ask for materials, material, marketing material regarding the company. And also during the interview, he gave up he gave to the competitor the strategy that they use to invest. That is where the, the violation comes in. He does not respect the employer and preserve the confidentiality of the employer. Okay, thank you. So then what would be the guidance so that then you're not uh, violating and maybe one of your team members? All right. Before I answer your question, I'd like to add something on case two, what you asked uh, in case two, uh, case three, sorry. Nuru Eden is not... Uh, it's not brought out clearly in the cases whether she is a CFA member or a CFA candidate, okay? But that doesn't mean that she should break the law. Actually, CFA Institute uh, encourages firms and entities while they are developing their code of ethics to include or to draw insights from what they have, or the CFA has all already stipulated. And that's why as part of our recommendation, we suggested that Nuru Aden should consider taking a, a CFA program so that she can know what's uh, required of, uh, of her in the profession. Uh, your question was uh, from case uh, two. 
case free, yeah? Uh -huh. Pardon, please. What I'd like to know is uh, what is the guidance, what sort of uh, policies, if any, should be instituted yeah, yeah. so that when you're leaving one employment for another, there isn't uh, any breaches, there isn't any violations. I, I need maybe just two or three practical things that should be in place. All right, thank you. Uh, it's not bad to look for a job, as my colleague has said. The thing, that's, uh, uh, the thing that we're talking about here, about being unethical, is the mode that you use to look for this new job. If you use your employer's uh, confidential information, that's wrong and should not be encouraged. It's quite wrong. So as a part of a recommendation again, we suggested that Flex Company can come up with a clear exit strategy. That means that the employees in, that, uh, in Flex, when they are being separated from the entity, there can be some uh, clear guidance on how they can do the same. For example, they can uh, be signing a contract, maybe they can be working on contractual terms, so that uh, by the end of your contract, uh, maybe your, 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 when the contract is uh, contaminated, uh, uh, terminated, sorry, you can be separated, all right? But you cannot leave uh, your, your current employment without very specific uh, uh, procedures. So, sorry, and I, I know, but uh, this is the last thing I ask. Uh -huh. um, so, assuming you separate, as you say, it's a contract and it's expired, mm -hmm. and you move on to a competitor, mm -hmm. is it wrong to apply the knowledge to use the materials that you gained? And if it's not wrong, I mean, how do you go about it? Knowledge. Knowledge is not wrong to use. Because actually in the standards, Members and candidates must act for the benefit of their current employer. So if you are competent enough, if you're professional enough, it's not wrong to use that knowledge. But materials, it's, that's unethical. You can go ahead and use marketing uh, strategies that your current, uh, that your former, sorry, employer was using for the benefit of this new uh, employer. That is quite unethical. Can you, you. Can you use your models? Models? Yeah, I'm allowed to show your models to your to a new employer. Additional models. No, you, he's he's shown his models to his new employer uh -huh. or an ex capital. Is that allowable? No, it's not allowed. It's not ethical. Thank you. Um, again on uh, case three, and uh, Nuru says that uh, she can share the the information requested because after all, John is justifying that the information has been shared with prospective clients. Uh, so what's, is there an issue with that conversation or that deduction? Thank you. Seems case three is the, where the weight was concentrated, actually. Uh, this, what we, we, we term as implying to create the intention to, to be part of that violation. Nuru Eden implies, it's not quite explicit that She's part of this, but implies the intention to be part of this violation. And this violates the first standard. Under professionalism, knowledge of the law. It's just that members and candidates must understand and comply with the given laws, rules, and regulations. And this includes CFA Code of Ethics and Standards. It goes ahead and states that members and ca candidates or covered persons must not knowingly be part of these violations or assist others in committing such violations. So Nuru Eden, at some extent, she knowingly knows that uh, uh, it's bad for what John is doing, and she goes ahead and assists in committing this violation of the same. Thank you. Just to add something, the information has been shared with the clients but not with a competitor. That's why it's, no, it's not public knowledge. It's not on the website. If had, it was on the website, then the competitor would have easily accessed it. But the fact that it's John who wants to go take it to the competitor, that's where the violation comes in. You know, I, I want to address your um, comment that you think that case three is, is where the most weight is. Actually, the, t the reason I am seeing is that the judges are sensing that case three is where you're the weakest. And I think you need to go back and revise it. Um, case one, 
the conversation with Miss Caitlin. And uh, at the end of it, and uh, she, they've had the conversation, and she says, okay, you go ahead and do the report. I'll keep tabs on it once it's done. And they, of course, finish and go ahead and issue the report. Uh, is there any indication of a violation there? Uh, thank you so much. Now, Ms. Kathleen, I can say is um, the archives heal of this uh, case um, because she has not performed her role as a supervisor. Uh, that's standard four, duties to the employer. Uh, the last part which says that you must act you, as, as, as a supervisor, you must detect and prevent any violation of the rules and regulations. Now, Ms. Kathleen should have noticed that the way John Mwanga was uh, giving the report and was not ready to disclose his special treatment at the at Wilka Transport Company, uh, she should have gone ahead and kept him from issuing this recommendation. Uh, because uh, first of all, by going to write the recommendation, going ahead and issuing it, uh, clearly there was no compliance. And I think as, as a supervisor, she really had failed her role. Thank you. To reinforce that, Ms. Kathleen Mumba, here, she's conducting an orchestra of unethical practices. So in this case, she should step up on her supervisory responsibilities. And actually, Flex Investment Limited should set up a compliance department just to ensure before these investment recommendations are given out, before they are disseminated, have they been done so with due diligence? Has reasonable care been initiated in these recommendations? Have they really exercised thoroughness in these recommendations? So actually, she should step up on her role as a supervisor. And it was her duty to ensure that the investment recommendations given are accurate and complete. Thank you. OK, so uh, f to follow up on that, I'm more interested on the practical side of things. So just three because you know, I'm trying to crystallize the ideas here. Just three recommendations regarding, uh, or two recommendations regarding supervisory, two practical recommendations that need to be taken by this firm. First, I'll still reinforce, this company needs a compliance department. And the compliance officer should be separate from the four employees. Someone who will be there to ensure that these people are conforming to the set standards. Two, there should be firewalls. Information should not flow directly from analysts to the portfolio manager before it's verified. Any additions? Yeah, uh, maybe also uh, the firm can come up with an in-job training and a refresher course for those already uh, maybe in the management roles in-job training on ethics. This will ensure that the ethical uh, culture is being inculcated in the whole organization. And a refresher course, maybe for those in the management, so that uh, if they unknowingly commit these violations, they can refresh from the same. Thank you very much.